so today I'm going to be showing you how to make this voting application in only 128 lines of code. Now it's relatively simple, you can click this and you will vote on a certain programming language. Now this is not secure, I just want to add that in the beginning. But, you know, it's relatively fun and for like playing around with it, it's actually kind of cool. You can see it's live updating. And if we vote over here, it's also live updating. All right. And of course, this could be on the internet. This could be on your phone. So let me go over how this code actually works. Like I said, there's only 128 lines of code. So it's actually relatively simple. Now, the first thing I do here is import express because that's what we're going to be using to host the website. Then I set the port to port 80. You could pick anything. Then I host the front end. This here is, by the way, the structure of the code. So we, I have the server.js file our node project here and then I have a client folder with our index file which is where all of the client stuff is and essentially in the server I just host that client stuff and that's what this line does. The next thing here is that I just start the web server and initialize socket IO. Then I initialize all of the different candidates. Now if you want more or if you want to change these then all you have to do is just make sure to keep this incrementing like this. And then you can set the starting vote. You can set the label. The label is what's going to show up up here. You can also click on them. Didn't actually know that. But yeah, pretty cool. But that's going to be that label up there. Now, if you don't know Circuit IO or Express, this is going to be maybe a bit difficult to understand. So I'll include two videos down below on both Express and Circuit.io. So make sure to watch the basics of that. But if you are a little bit more advanced in programming and you do understand web servers, you don't really have to watch those videos. You can just go ahead and watch this. Everything should kind of make sense. Essentially, when we get a new connection from our client, then we emit this update. Now, this will emit an update. And the way Socket.io works is this is going to be the tag and this is going to be the value of Socket.io. So if I send out this tag here of update, then everybody that's listening for the tag update will receive this data here. And I can show you that on the client when we get to that one later. But just know that that's essentially just emitting the update to all of our clients. Now, whenever we receive a new vote, because this system also works in the reverse, so the client then also makes a notification on the vote and the server then listens to that. Whenever we receive a vote, we take that index, which I will show you later, but essentially that's the index of the vote. That is this index over here. And I just check if that already exists. This just for safety. And then I increase it because if we increased it and it didn't exist, then we would get an error. So just make sure that that exists and then we increase the vote. And then I show the candidates and you can see I show them down here and that's just for testing. And then I make that update message. So when I receive this vote here, then I send out an update to all of the other clients on the network that a new update happened. So somebody changed the vote. So hopefully you can see how that works. This sort of initializes the state on the client. And this will run every time that we receive a new vote. And this is just our RGB function, relatively simple. You can see the values you would need to put in there if you didn't want this function here. Now on the client, you can see, first of all, I import these two here. This is chart.js and it is socket IO. Now socket IO is both a server version and a client version. This is the client version. And then I set our title. I make a canvas. I initialize our buttons. I initialize the canvas. I then initialize the charts. And then I connect to the socket IO server. So that's the server that we created over here. And then I listen for update events. And then I take all of the candidates because that's what, remember, that's what we're sending here. We're sending all of the candidates with the updated vote.
and then I convert them into an array. And the reason why I convert them into an array is because chart.js takes a special sort of data. So all I'm doing in here is just remapping that candidate data into chart.js data. So the first step of that is to convert them to an object. Then I loop through each of that candidate in that object. And then you can read the text up here. That's essentially what happens. If you don't quite understand this, I would highly recommend you to just sit and play around with this. And then I finally update the chart once we have actually made that update to the chart. And this is the function that makes a new vote. As you can see, I've set this message here and I've done that for a reason. I can just show you the reason. It's kind of fun when you know it, but you do want to like make this more secure if you were actually hosting this. But you can essentially just run vote down here and let's vote for one. And you could see how you could just put this on like a loop or like an interval. And that would be kind of bad if you were actually wanting to rate anything legit. And guys, comment down below if you want me to make a part two where I make this vote function here more secure. Just so you can't just run it repeatedly. And guys, that was everything for today. And I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully see you in the next one.